Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips number 111. What a great oh. uh, brought to you every Friday, more or less, at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton, and we're lucky enough today to have with us a special guest, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Hello, Anton. <laughs> um, so we're heading into a long weekend. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yes, but not before we have um, the opportunity to give another valuable tip to the community. And I believe that we can do this week's tip in just five minutes, actually five minutes this time. Uh, I think that's a rule worth sticking to. So uh, this week I challenged you, Anton, to help me solve a particular problem that I have. Um, I'm a big fan of Apex authorization schemes, uh, but I struggle to test them effectively. Uh, it's... Um, uh, often the recourse is to have several users uh, that you have access to test users with different other authorization schemes, but often that's not practical. Um, so perhaps you have a suggestion for me. Yeah, it's particularly hard if you know if your authentication scheme is like you said single sign-on or something that you don't have access to to do these things with. Right, it really can be a, a challenge. You want to be able to log in as essentially anybody. Yeah, to get a test user, you'd have to get special permission from IT or something like it. Yeah, it's just not easy. Yeah. Well, the key is to understand how Apex deals with maintaining a session throughout, um, throughout your applications. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on my timer right away, kick off things, and we'll really only take five minutes. So um, in short, you, you may know that when you log into the Apex Builder itself, these are separate applications, but you can tab through them and you can see at the top application 4750, application 4600, application 4000. But they all share a session ID and a cookie. They all use the same cookie name. If we were to inspect this, we'd see that there's a cookie associated with it. So the key is let this switch app, that's the app that we're going to, going to say is our app. This is the app that we really want to test. So the key is the, the application that you've deployed to production that you that right. you're looking to test. It's got 500 pages in it, all kinds of auth authorization authorization schemes. It has an authentication scheme. It doesn't matter what this is. This could be single sign-on. It, it it doesn't matter at all. You've got an authentication scheme. The key here is you 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 don't want to use application sharing. You want to use either workspace sharing or custom. Nice. A little bonus tip within the tip. Workspace sharing and application sharing don't allow you to set the secure right here. If you ever have a scan on your application from a security, they're going to want this flipped. So I end up using custom anyway, often. But I'm going to use Masquerade Ball as my cookie. You can use whatever cookie name that makes sense for you. Um, it needs to be you know, relatively unique, but Masquerade Ball is my cookie name. Okay, yeah, so now... Being able to name your own cookie is, is a little bit of self-documentation, too. It is, it is. So, so there we go. Then what we're going to do, it, that's the only change I'm going to make to this application. No other change at all. And if you're already using workspace sharing, keep it at workspace sharing. Yeah. Workspace sharing. Then yeah. I have an Yeah, and so far everything we've done is like super safe and... Absolutely. I'm going to create another app called Masquerade Ball. My Masquerade Ball is going to have... The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a an item on my login page called masquerade. And this, this is going to allow me to type in any username I want, anything at all that I want to, to do it. Um, and then I'm going to go to my authentication scheme. And this is using built in, you know, my, my builder workspace usernames and passwords. I'm going to add a little bit of code right here, post auth. And what this code does is it says, okay, if you have entered the masquerade item, on your login page, and you are a developer in this workspace. So you've gotten logged in as a developer. I'm going to let you masquerade change to a different user. So this will only work if you're if you're already a developer. You, of course, if you want to, if you don't care about that, you want to allow anybody to do it. You can get rid of this. But uh, but and uh, Apex has that handy API, um, Apex Custom Auth User for that purpose. Right, and depending on the version of Apex, you need to do it here in your post auth. You won't let you do it other places. So this is why it's important to do it right here in this post auth. And then of course, right here, you have to put post auth here. Okay, and it, this is it. I think we have two minutes to, to test it and show how it goes. So let's let's give it a try. I'm going to log in to this application. Oh, I put one other thing I'm gonna say. I put a button on page one. All but this button does is it 
points me to the other application. It's the standard um, redirect to the, the button is a redirect to the other application right there. That's yeah. all the button does. So here we go. I'm going to log in. I'm going to log in as this user. Let me get my password really quickly. And, and this application is not one that we want to deploy to production. Uh, co correct. You, you, you ideally, I, we'll talk about, I, I don't know that it would really hurt, but I don't think you should, right? Um, so who should I log in as, Hayden? Uh, how about we log in as AIT111. AIT111. Okay. And you, as you can see, that's not even a, work, a user in my workspace. It's just a random string that we chose, but I'm going to log in as A. So I got logged in as AIT111. I was only able to do that because I was able to first get authenticated as an actual workspace developer. And now I can jump across to my other application. So here I am. Here I'm in app 278. That's the application that we theoretically have in production. So this completely solves my problem. I, I can masquerade as um, any user that I please without having to uh, worry about creating new test users or, uh, or accidentally messing with my own authorization. Yeah, anybody you want, you, you're in. Um, and like we said, I, I wouldn't recommend um, putting the Masquerade app into production, but you know, if you did, they'd only be able to log in if they, if they had a developer account in production anyway, which is yeah. hopefully not something you have a lot going on. So look at five minutes and we're there. Um, yeah. And uh, if, if people wanted to consult um, how you've built this, um, is there a way that they can do so outside of having seen you perform this? Absolutely. They could, um, they could um, download the application from my GitHub repository. Um, so, or they could even go to my hash node, uh, which I'm ready to hit publish on that has this. I'll pull this right here. Um, I think I can just click publish. And if you go to apexdebug.com, uh, I haven't, uh, I'm supposed to put in an SEO, I don't know, like an Oracle tag or something. It's going to tell well, me. Well, I'm a done. subscriber to your blog, so I will get an email as soon as you publish. Right. So if anybody else is, so where do we do it? This some, they, they want me to put a tag in, and I always forget to do it. Well, oh, here we go. Oh, our CLL. I'm going to do it right now. If, if people well, want, I'm going to hit publish. There you go. You've got, um, you've got it available. It's apexdebug.com. So if you go to apexdebug.com, you will be right there. Um, download the uh, download the Switch app, and you're good to go. And uh, how many points is that towards your uh, monthly? Uh, uh, well, hopefully, I will get some points. Um, you know, this blog, this um, show doesn't get me any points at all for my Ace uh, vest or Oracle. Case contribution points. If we look right here, I need, it looks like, how many more points do I need? Uh, but I need an additional 45 points to make my make my quota. Um, see, it's a little bit of a flex right here. Um, I should take this off. I don't want to be that um, obvious about things. <laughs> you're you're uh, double uh, there in, in Oracle Ace gear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, but uh, yeah, so if anybody follows me, you'll be seeing at least five more blog posts over the next four days because I have until May 31st to get my next ones in. Unfortunately, this show, as we've mentioned, doesn't get uh, doesn't get any points because I guess it's I guess it's because of our Barrel House Z sponsorship that we don't get any any um, points for this. But yeah, uh, uh, we let Barrel House Z dictate the content that we. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're, uh, they're, you know, they're very influential. So, <laughs> all right. Um, well, I think that I have um, more than exhausted the five minutes that people uh, come in for. Oh yeah, the the, the tip is over. I, I think we have a few questions. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, you've been paying far more close attention than I have. Well, what do we have? Um, let's see. Uh, I see the first question uh, question that I see with a question mark behind it um, uh, is it is it only for custom app it, for custom users does it affect app user not sure I understand oh great this is great so so it sets app user when you do this 
So what I did was I, I logged in to the, the one application. I clicked into the other. If I look in my session, um, and I, I have to hide this. Let's see. If I look at my session, you'll see I actually am the user AIT111. And it's even case sensitive. Right. It's like it's exactly what I typed in there. So what happens is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to um, go back to the other application and log out just really quickly. So we're able to um, show this. Uh, I'm going to come here. I'll log out when I log in and I'm going to use my um, I'm using my developer. This is my workspace user. And I'm going to um, who it was. It was uh, Stefan that asked the question. So Stefan, what, what will happen is when I click sign in, it will actually sign me in as Anton. And then it will immediately change app user to Stefan. Um, so I'm gonna do that right now. Stefan, here we go. I'm logged in as Stefan. It happened immediately. If I look at my session information here, I'm Stefan. If I then switch to the other application, I'm already logged in. I already have this session ID. I already have the cookie set. It's not going to ask me to log in again because all those things are set. It's just going to let me go right to the other application. There I am. I'm Stefan. So, um, so that's that question. Uh, the other thing I added was a log of actions when the user was in person. Oh, that's not not too bad. That would be a good idea, right? You could um, you could even just do an Apex debug uh, dot message and force the message so that it goes into your e your Apex debug log. Of course, those clear out every couple of weeks, but you could have your own table. But Gabrielle, that's a good idea to, to yeah. add something like that to this. Um, ah, what permissions does a masked user have to have? If well, there is no masked user. Well, I think he's he's saying like if I if I logged in, um, at, like here, Stefan. Yeah, like uh, maybe a more so 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 far we've uh, we've only demonstrated logging in as like essentially non-existent users, but theoretically you could log in as as an as an administrator. Right, you're you're logged in as Stefan. So any authorization schemes that you have, anything that you have related to this application, they're going to look at colon app as being Stefan. Whether you whether this application switch app uses Google authentication or anything else, it doesn't matter. This user is Stefan. Yeah. So, so um, I mean, if the uh, uh, if the audit data that um, uh, yeah, so, so if the data matters in this environment, like you could theoretically do some damage. Right, yeah, and you could log in as, I could log in as Francis, um, uh, our CEO, and I would be, I would be, I would be Francis, even though I didn't use the Talon Azure SSO and everything, I, it would be as if I did. It would be identical as if I logged in as something like that. So, uh, what's else? It, you know what, it does not matter. It happens to be, in this case, um, Apex authentic, Apex users, database users, or not database, Apex workspace users it, right now, but I could change it to anything. It does not matter what the authentication scheme is here because it skips authentication altogether. I was already authenticated before I came to this application because I had the same cookie name and I had an existing session. So in this particular application, the authentication scheme is Apex workspace users. Stefan is not even an Apex workspace user. It doesn't matter. It could be any, any, any authentication scheme. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're getting a lot of audience engagement. Um, this clearly yeah. is provocative material. Yes. So here's the, another good question. Is that Theo? And yes, it is. Usually I do not have Theo uh, in the office with me when I'm doing the show, but we have uh, a new roof going on the house, and um, that was uh, not, ha he wasn't happy for that. So I run him out of the office and, abs oh, my goodness, Theo. Yes, that maybe would have been less distracting for me. Um, I'm definitely distracted by him. Uh, ah, so I hope, uh, what author does the impersonated user have? Okay, so here's the thing user, oh, what authorization scheme does the person, an authorization scheme? checks things. People don't have authorization schemes. Authorization schemes resolve to true or false. So this person would have whatever the, uh, this authorization scheme would, would run and check whatever it is based upon this user, Stefan. So yep. I think it's a really important thing that 
there's there are roles and people are assigned to roles, but then authorization schemes are true or false. And so you can say this authorization scheme is based upon a role. And so it would then check membership of the role, but authorization schemes are, are merely a true or false in the moment. So, so if Stefan Steph oh. is not an authorized user, Stefan would see an authorization error. Exactly, exactly. Yep. And so if you have an application level authorization and Stefan fails that authorization, he would not get to, to be in here. But but authentication is completely skipped in this scenario. Well, I um, I love this tip and it sounds like um, a lot of other people uh, are very intrigued by it. Yeah, so um, you're welcome to download the application and simply install it in your workspace. The only, uh, well, my, my hash node, <laughs> apexdebug.com, explains the, the very minimal steps that you have to take um, to, to make it work. Um, and hopefully I'll get more than five points for this blog post. My last blog post only got me five points. And I think you I deserve mean, at least 45 points. I think this, I think this is a 45 point blog post for sure. That's With all of this engagement, yeah. <laughs> So, <clears throat> all right, uh, so, uh, oh, so I think that Neil is just saying that, he, that this worked well for him. Um, at some point. So, no. good. Um, all right, well, I think that uh, it, people have wasted a perfectly good 17 minutes. Uh, enjoy your long weekend if you have one. If you don't, um, you know, just play hooky on Monday. All right. <laughs> Do all the things. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.